So you want to be a Dark Knight. So you want to penetrate your foes with a mighty spear and drain their life force as you do so. Then you've come to the right class. So in first job, you get... Slash Blast. Like, you know, normal warrior. It's basically the same job advancement. Um, yeah, it's, you know, same skill you've been seeing in the uh, Adventure Warrior or Explorer Warrior uh, videos. It's not very good, but it's, it's, you know, it's whatever. It's an attack. It'll get you to level 30. War Leap is Dark Knight's version of Flash Jump. It just has a darker color to it. And the other two are whatever. In second job, you get Piercing Drive. So this attack has a unique property to it, where... Well, I guess Marksman have the same thing, but I'll get to it when I get to it. Where if an enemy is close to you, you do extra crit, uh, crit rate, but if they're far away from you, you do extra damage. So I'm pretty sure it goes by the little ring that shows up when you attack. So if they're on the closer side towards your character of the ring, then your crit crit rate is increased. If they're on the left side, or the uh, part that's furthest away from your character, you get more damage. So I thought that was a pretty cool attack for a second job. Um, doesn't really have too much range on it. I mean, I think if I flash jump here, I can't hit that row. But if I use the first job, you know, slash blast, I think I can. So the range is less, but it's a more useful skill. And then you also get Evil Eye, which is your little companion that flies around. Uh, in second job, it increases, it heals you uh, 20, heals you for 20 HP every 24 seconds. Doesn't sound like much because it's not much, but later on it does get buffs that really help out. Spear Sweep. I didn't really use it. It um, drags enemies to you, um, does two lines of damage. I didn't really use it, but I'm sure you can find a use for it. Um, booster, of course, increases your attack speed. Iron Will increases you and your party members' defense. So, it's a pretty good party skill. Hyperbody, increases yourself and your party members' HP and MP by 60%. Um, that is not where I put it. Where is it? There it is. So it can really increase your party's HP and MP, or survivability in general. Weapon Mastery. When equipping a, a spear or polearm, your mastery is increased 50%. But, if you use a spear, your attack speed is increased by 1, and your damage is increased by 5%. So, you pretty much always want to be using a spear. And the other two are whatever. In third job, you get La Mancha Spear. You can hold down the skill to just move around and spin and do damage to enemies around you. But when I was third job as a Dark Knight, the way that I trained was just pressing the button once and doing massive damage uh, with the ending animation. I mean, you can hold it down. It's, you know, it's not bad. You just can't use flash jump. So pretty much how I trained was I would flash jump over here, press it once, because it does a lot of damage with the finisher attack. But um, that's pretty much how I trained in their job. Yeah, 740% damage. It's pretty good. You also get Rush. Um, doesn't move as far as Heroes. I think it moves farther than Paladins, though. Or maybe the same distance. And has a darker theme to it, because you're a Dark Knight. Uh, Evil Eye Shock. Is that the one I think it is? Yes, it is. Okay. So, when you activate Evil Eye Shock, your Evil Eye will do pretty much like a uh, AoE attack, where it'll attack enemies around um, the area that you activated, doing massive damage. It's a great skill to use while you're just like, let's say you're training on something and then you just, you realize, oh, well I can just go over here, use this, you know, use uh, Evil Eye Shock and then keep moving. It's pretty nice, only has a 12 second cooldown as well. Then we move on to Cross Surge. And Cross Surge gives you a damage boost based on where your HP bar is currently. So right now my HP isn't fully increased, but I do have Hyper Body on. Um, but as soon as I fully heal myself, it'll give me more of a damage boost because now my HP bar is full. 
So as I keep taking damage, my range will go down. But these guys don't hit too hard, so I'm not going to be able to show you like the least it can give you. But um, as you attack, you heal anyway. And that's thanks, uh, thanks to Lord of Darkness. It increases your crit rate, um, your crit damage, and you have a 100% chance to recover 2% HP while you attack. Eye of Domination. Basically, it just allows your Beholder to fly around and deal damage. So it doesn't have to stick to you all the time. You can just stay back there and do damage. Uh, it's whatever. So also in third job, your Beholder can now buff you. So every four seconds, um, it can give you an attack boost of 40, a defense boost of 500, and a crit rate boost of um, 10%. And then we move on to fourth job. And in fourth job, you get your actual bossing skill, which is, I don't know how to pronounce this, Gunnier. Gunnier's Descent. And it has a cooldown of, I think it was eight seconds? Yes, eight seconds. Does a lot of lines, attacks one enemy. Well, I guess I can attack two if you get the fifth job. Uh, well, I'll get into fifth job when I get to fifth job. Um, it does a lot of damage to one enemy. It reduces, or not reduces, it ignores 30% um, of enemy defense. And let's see, when attacking, damage increased 110% of max HP. I, I don't know what that means, but anyway, it's really strong. Just just believe me, it's really strong. Um, and then you also get Magic magic Rash. You already know what it does. It removes all enemy... Not all. It removes some enemy uh, debuffs, and also prevents them from buffing themselves while it, they have the uh, thing above their head. The debuff. Dark Impale is your new mobbing skill. Has good range, um... Attacks multiple enemies. It's pretty strong, actually. It's a very nice, very nice skill. Kind of combines, if you remember old Dragon Knights, how they had the triple stab dragon attack, as well as they had the other option of using the like polearm slam kind of attack, where they summon a dragon on top of the enemy. It's kind of a mix between those two skills, because you slam down and then you do a triple stab. So it's kind of like Nexon trying to say, hey, we didn't get rid of your skill, it just looks different. And we combine them. Stance, you can't get knocked back. Sacrifice. So when you use Sacrifice, you literally sacrifice your Beholder. Or I think they call it an Evil Eye. Have I, have I been calling it Beholder this whole time? <laughs> they call it Evil Eye. Oops. I'm going to still call it Beholder. It used, to be, be called, it used to be called Beholder. That's what I'm just used to. But yeah, the Evil Eye. So you sacrifice the Evil Eye. And um, don't worry, you keep the buff. If it buffed you already. So you sacrifice the Evil Eye in order to increase your, um, let's see, it restores 100% max HP as soon as you cast it, and it, you ignore 10% of enemy defense for 30 seconds, and your boss damage is increased by 10%. Not only that, but when you use it like this, then you're able to not only summon your Beholder again while you have Sacrifice, but now you can spam Gunnir. So... You could just spam your bossing skill uh, while sacrifice is on. And this is pretty much how you boss. You uh, activate sacrifice and then you spam Gunnir. Now, in order to use sacrifice um, more often, because every time your beholder attacks an enemy, you get a reduced cooldown of sacrifice. So you can use Dark Shock, or the Evil Shock, or whatever it's called, to reduce the cooldown so you don't have to wait too long for it. But you can also get buff duration to uh, make it last longer. Uh, Maple Warrior increases all stats. Final Pact. So Final Pact is the other way that you can spam your um, bossing skill. Because otherwise it has an 8 second cooldown. And when Final Pact activates... Well, okay, so the way that you activate Final Pact is you have to actually die. You have to, Your HP has to hit 0. Once your HP hits 0 and um, Final Pact is not on cooldown... You will then go into like an undead state where you have god mode, um, which means you can't take damage from any attacks or any status or anything like that. Um, and you can just spam Gunnir. The thing is, is that if you don't, if you're fighting a boss, if you don't attack the boss, I think it was 30 times before, um, how many seconds was it? Before the 40 seconds are up, 
then you die like normal. Like, your character just dies normally. If you do, however, attack the boss 30 times or more, then um, your character will not actually die, but Final Pact will go on cooldown. Um, so yeah, that's nice. So not only are you able to spam your bossing skill during this move, but also... Um, let's see, does it have any secondary effects? No, I think they're just passive. So basically it just allows you to spam Gunnear, and you don't take damage. But the cooldown is very long, by the way. Um, the cooldown is... 600 seconds. Wow. And there's Mastery and Revenge. So, when you take damage, your Beholder can attack the enemy that attacked you. That's pretty much what that means. Moving on to Hypers, I made sure that Evil Eye's damage is increased. Um, like, any of the attacks Evil Eye does is increased. The buff that it gives used to only give 20, but with this buff on, it gives 50 now, because this adds 30. I also added the Final Pact Final Damage, 20%. This isn't passive. You have to actually be in... Um, you have to be in Final Pact, like you have to activate it, in order for this to um, activate. A lot of people say to put into this one, because this is a passive buff. Um, you can get a, a free 20% bonus critical chance. Um, I don't really need it because I don't really play my Dark Knight, and if I did, I'd make sure that I had 100% crit rate without putting that on, so I think I'd still be putting into this. And then for Gun Year, I made sure it does extra damage, and I made sure it does more damage to bosses. And then for active hypers, Dark Thirst increases your attack by 80 and allows you to recover 9% HP when attacking, which is, believe me, it's a big boost because Dark Knights don't attack slowly. Um, and then at 170, you get Nightshade Explosion, which is just like a AoE-like thing. Um, has a short cooldown, so you can use it really nice. It's really nice for training. But uh, other than that, it's just another attack you can use. And then at 200, you get, you know, the 10% damage that most other classes get. So I don't think I have to show you training, it's pretty simple, you just run around using Dark Impale and uh, Dark Shock or Evil Eye Shock. Yeah, it's pretty simple. So I got into the bossing. As a Dark Knight, you never really have to worry about healing because every attack you do heals yourself. So um, yeah, you're pretty much set when it comes to uh, bossing. And even if you do die... Um, like, I'll see if I can let him do damage or flex so I can die. So right now I'm using Sacrifice in order to um, spam Gunnir. But if I were to die, I'd still be able to spam it. Eh, you know what? I'm not going to die. I'll just kill him. And is pretty much how I boss on a Dark Knight. Let's say Sacrifice runs out, though. I'll just cancel it myself. Then I use Gunnir whenever it's off cooldown, and then I use Dark Shock while I'm attacking. And that's pretty much how I boss in this quest. So yeah, hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you in the next one.